something else into it. What is this, Ramsey? Are you still trying to make a murder case out of Tim Riley's death? You better answer me. A death with a violent aftermath. What goes on between my father and I? That's none of your business. It's my business when you start busting stuff up. When you start bad-mouthing a man who died under strange circumstances. Richard Boone stars as Heck Ramsey. for the past five years. A victim of the fool laws and customs in this territory that says a woman can't do anything, not even make a living for herself when there ain't no man around to do it for her. After my husband passed away, I spent four long years studying the law and passing the examination. I qualify as an attorney in this territory. Legally Someone ought to marry the widow and get her off of the street. Well, I sure wouldn't have that little handful, even as pretty as she is. Besides, I don't think marrying her off would solve the problem. A woman another good job. She doesn't have to be a lawyer. She can be a store manager or a bartender or a barber. She has to mention a barber. None of those things. I know because I've tried and I've been turned down simply because I'm a woman. Well, let me tell you here and now, a woman is a person. And I'm not saying that to just you men. I want you women to understand that and, and to hear it. Oh, it's delicious and so cold. What do they call it? Ice cream. Carmen, you just started selling it. Mm. Ow! What's wrong? I have this tooth been giving me some trouble. Cold stuff made it hurt. Oh, you should see Dr. Coogan. Ice cream. You know, it's so cold, it makes my tongue numb. <laughs> that new model motor car is due here any minute. I don't know why she has to do her belly aching here and now. Well, because the motor car company wouldn't give her a job. The last time she made a speech, we almost had a riot. Mr. MT, Mr. MT is dead. Wait a minute. Who's dead? Mr. Riley, I, I found him dead in his cabin. His eyes were open. You touched anything? No, sir. I, I just saw him and run. Doc. Chief, maybe I ought to stop the widow now. No, Arnie, there's a difference between free speech and a free for all. She, she, just keep away. Just somebody to blame when things go wrong and to ignore when things go right. What killed him, Doc? Looks like heart failure. You sure? As far as I can tell, there are no wounds, no signs of being beaten or internal bleeding. Yeah, but Tim Riley would, could have been more than 25 years old. That's awful young for a heart failure. Doesn't mean it didn't happen that way. Well, the heart can fail for a lot of reasons. Suffocation, poison, electrical shock. It didn't happen any of those ways, Heck. I'll wager my stethoscope on it. Tim went out real easy. I would have guessed it happened in his sleep if his eyes hadn't been open. Well, what about the bruises on his knuckles? Torn fingernails. He could have done that in a job or just trying to open the front door. Well, if you're thinking he was in a fight, he must have landed all the blows. That would explain the bruises on the knuckles, but torn fingernails. Strong young fellow like Tim Riley never fought with his fingernails. Well, he must have been sick. 
Doc, you ever known Tim Riley to be sickly? He never came to me with any ailments, but he's only been settled here a year since he mustered out of the Army. Yeah. Mary, was Tim Riley ever sick? No, sir. He, he was always out working for Mr. Munson when I come to clean. Heck, the man obviously died a natural death. Why are you trying to read something else into it? Because sometimes things just look too natural to be true. For instance? Well, for instance, this room, the way he's laid out there. You know, a man comes in sick, he's going to take off his jacket and his boots before he lies down. Maybe he was too sick. You don't look too fine yourself. I have a tooth. Kept me up all night. Want me to take a look at it? Later. Now, if he was suffocating, if he was fighting for air, he'd have loosened his collar. And he'd open the windows. Mr. Riley always opened the windows. First thing when he'd come in, he used to say that he had to have lots of fresh air. That looks like blood. And it's still wet. Now, man trying to get from that door to that bed, would you say he'd have to step on that rug? He'd almost have to. Well, take a look at the rug. There's no blood on it. And the blood on his boots is still wet. Are you saying Tim Riley didn't walk to the bed? That's right. He was carried there. Why would they do that? Well, I'm not sure. But if he had died someplace else and somebody had killed him, they'd have a pretty good reason for doing it. He does look like he was just set there. Yeah, the bedspread isn't even wrinkled. It's too neat. All right, if you're right, if he was killed and somebody carried him in here, how did they kill him? Oh, Amos is going to have to tell us that, but you can forget about your natural death certificate for the time being. Munson, Neil. I can't believe it. I saw him in the office this morning, said he didn't feel good, so I sent him home. What time was that? Oh, around... 30. What did he die of, Doc? We're not sure yet. That was like a son to me. The boy had no family. I want him to have a decent burial. I'll take care of everything. A funeral service will be all right. But the burial will have to wait until later. What for? I want Doc Coogan to do an autopsy. Autopsy. What's that? It's a very thorough examination of the corpse, Neil. I'm going to have to open Tim Riley up, find out what killed him. Female who raises his hand 
I'm gonna stick your head right in the ground. Now get out of here. Go on. I demand you arrest that woman, Chief Stack. She incited a riot. It's the widder's fault, Tex. He laid down right smack dab in front of the door. He is on private property. And this fella here started the swing. Oh, thank you, Sonny. Hello, Heck. Uh, Barney Tolliver. I'm not surprised to find you at the bottom of a fight, but what the hell are you doing in New Prospect? I'm well, just looking for a job. I want to this area cleared and everything back to normal, okay? Esther! I'm gonna have to arrest you. Trespassing on private property, unlawful assembly. And what about inciting a riot? Yeah, you can have that, too. Good. Now we'll just see if you male supremacists can make those charges hold. What about this character? Heck, why is it that every brawler and saddle tramp that drifts into town turns out to be one of your old friends? <laughs> yeah. I guess he is your friend. Who oh, is he? Named Barney Tolliver. He used to rob banks. I put him away twice last time for 10 years. How long ago was that? Six years. Time off, good behavior. Your friend's a hardened criminal. Off his record, I'd say there's little chance he'll change. Well, he did his time. He's free to come and go. I know that, but I'd just as soon he'd be free somewhere else. We've got enough problems. I have to get a court order to authorize the autopsy on Tim Riley. You sure it's necessary? The only thing I'm sure of is that Tim Riley was murdered. Barney Tolliver. This is Esther Heppenstall. Heppenstall? Well, it's a pleasure and a privilege, ma'am. You're gonna wear yourself out, you know. You gotta learn to use your time in jail. Otherwise, it seems like you're in here forever. I enjoyed your speech this afternoon. Thought you had some very important things to say. Thank you. Ma'am, you really think you can equal things up for women? Yes, I do, Mr. Uh, Tolliver. No offense intended, ma'am. No, I just have a natural curiosity about your cause. I do a lot of reading when I'm in jail. Not much else to do. I guess old Abe Lincoln and John Brown showed people you can rile them up enough to want to change things. It took this country more than 90 years and a civil war to get around to abolishing slavery. It may take more than that for women to obtain equal rights. But I can tell you this, sir. Until they do, this country's going to have a fight on its hands. Yeah. I guess they certainly will. Of course, it's like you say. It may take. Well... You may never see it in your lifetime. Nothing's ever exactly as it should be in one's lifetime. That's no reason to give up trying to make it right. <laughs> you certainly do have all the answers. Does that bother you? Oh, no. At least I don't think so. Of course, I'm not used to being around smart females. <laughs> oh, not that there's not plenty of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, I guess I'm a... I'm afraid I did all my running in the wrong hen yard. Hen yard? Oh, did I say something wrong, ma'am? I'm, I'm sorry, I... No, no, it, it's just I, I suppose I get overly defensive sometimes. Well, I can understand that. With all the hail Columbia you must take. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I think I like the idea of you being so smart. It makes me feel warm and pleasurable to be around. You're not above using your charms on women, are you, Mr. Tolliver? Well, just being myself, Mrs. Elpenstall. I do hope that charms you. Have you been in jail many times? Oh, many times. Half my natural life, ma'am. 
In my first 16 years, I was a free citizen. That's too bad. Well, anyone who repeats uh, the same mistake so regular must like what he's doing wrong. You are an interesting man. Which is more than I can say for other men in this territory. Oh, now, Esther. May I call you Esther? If you like. Esther. Uh, you're wearing yourself out again, ma'am. Esther, not every man has his head in the mud. Oh, really? Name me one around here who doesn't. Peck Ramsey? Oh. Ah, oh, there's a man. As bright and wide-minded as you'll ever hope to find. Though I'll never understand why he got into law enforcement. You certainly speak highly of someone who's just arrested you. He was only doing his job, man. You are an unusual man. Thank you, Esther. Look at this. It's the blood cell of a cow. Well, I hope you don't mind me pulling you away from the police digest. The scientific mind takes pleasure in examining all kinds of animal life. Now, look at this. That's the blood you had me scrape off the sole of Tim Riley's boot. That's cow's blood. I don't expect it helps you any. Tim Riley working for the Munson Cattle Company. There's nothing unusual about him getting cow's blood on his boots. Well, I don't know, Doc. See, the Munson Cattle Company doesn't do any slaughtering. Business as usual. Well, life has to go on. Too bad about Tim Riley. He was a good man. We all liked him. But the Army still travels on its stomach. You buy all your uh, beef from Munson? 2,000 head a month. He supplies every Army post in the territory. You ever buy a side of beef from him? Slaughtered? Huh? No, we could never keep them fresh. No, we purchase them on the hoof, drive them to the various posts, and butcher them on the spot. Cut that stir out, he's too thin for a trail drive. Sorry, Pa. Can't feed the army on skin and bones. You try and kneel out of foreman again. Well, he asked for another chance now that Tim is gone. Wish to God the boy had a little more sense. I tell you, it's hard to breed your own flesh and blood and know he's going to come up short. You yeah, well. Maybe you're asking too much of him. Neil is my son, but I don't let that influence me one way or the other. What can I do for you, Ramsey? Well, it seemed like Tim Riley died a natural death. Now, the autopsy hadn't been performed yet, but I just have a feeling that somebody tried to make it look that way. You're throwing your saddle on the wrong horse. I don't believe anyone killed Tim Riley. Why not? The boy had no enemies. Why would anybody want to kill him? I don't know. But I surely mean to find out. I'll tell you one thing. Tim was a fine young man. Never had any kind of arguments. Got along well with the customers. He had a great future in the cattle business. I would have seen to that. That's it, Pop. I got the Major's order ready to weigh out. Uh, at least two head shy. Get a couple more in there. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. Why does it always have to be me that's done something wrong? We'll talk about it later. It's all right, Neil. I'll pick out a couple for myself. All you need is a little more experience. Experience my foot. Look, I've been working on this corral since I was a snotty-nosed kid. Don't talk to me about experience. Look, 
So I made a mistake. Mayo. How about it? You gonna let me stay foreman or not? The answer is no, Mayo. Might as well know about it now, you and everybody else. All right, then tell me why. Because you're just not good enough yet. I'd have to watch every step of the way, redo everything. I don't have time. I've got to run this place, not spend my days supervising the foreman. You had plenty of time for Tim Riley. Not when he was working, Tim could think for himself. Oh, no. You always had time for Tim, and you know it. Maybe the Major was wrong when he said Tim didn't have any enemies. Oh, sure, Neil was jealous of Tim. They'd never do him any harm. Neil's a strange kid. He's hard-headed, hot-tempered. He's no killer. Yeah. Chief, Mrs. Carmody and all the people who signed it are requesting a court order preventing the autopsy. Why? Well, because it is absolutely inhuman of you to even think of, 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 of cutting up the dead. Mrs. Carmody, somebody might have killed him. Well, if Tim was killed, the good Lord will see that his murderer is punished. But no man has the right to defile and desecrate a beautiful young body. It is a sin. A filthy sin. There's an awful lot of names on that petition, Chief. Good citizens. I'm afraid I'm going to have to go along with the will of the people. Unless, of course, you can show me an awful good cause not to. How about trying to find a killer? turning you loose. You can't do that. I'm doing it. But I... I disturbed the peace. I caused an unlawful assembly, and I incited a riot. And I insist you press charges. Esther, I'm too busy trying to keep the law around here. I haven't got time to help you change it. You're just another rotten male supremacist. Never mind what I am. Now, you get out of my jail before I start charging you room and board. Come on, move it. Come on, Esther. It was real nice talking to you. Hope I get to see you again sometime. That little lady's really got it. She got what? Everything a lady's supposed to have. And something you and I don't have. Purpose. Well, I can see the time you spent in prison has improved your mind, but not enough to keep you out. <laughs> Heck, you still got a wicked sense of humor. It's good to see you. Well, I hope I can safely say the same about you. Oh, now, hold on. I'm not your new prospect to make any trouble. The fool with the goggles started that thing out there. Barney, you haven't changed... Honest, that auto contraption guy started it. You can That's just ask anybody. That's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about you trying to pull a robbery in this town and me having to blow your fool head off. Now, what are you doing in New Prospect? I'm looking for a job. What kind of a job? A bank job? No, I'm looking for work. Any kind of work. If I was looking to rob a bank, I'd pick on the big money in Tulsa or Oklahoma City. Not that two-bit institution New Prospect calls a bank. Well, you've already checked it out. I have not. Yeah, that's pretty good, Hank. Getting me all riled up like that, trying to figure out what I'm up to. You're still pretty clever. All right, Barney. Here you go. Thank you, friend. Can I buy you a drink? I'll tell you all about the bullpen in Oklahoma City. 
The one you sent me to. How's the time, Abby? I'm sure we'll run into each other. Give him his gun. Can't get the court order for the autopsy. Farewell, sir. See you, Hector. Why not? Anna Carmody got up a petition to stop it. Carmody, all right. We'll get Doc to do it without the court order. Not as long as I'm police chief in this town. All right. Judge changed his mind. How are you going to do that? Uh, hey. Why don't you get Doc to take a look at that, too? I'm all right. I know. You look terrible. You can't do that, Heck. You prefer charges against the widow, and she's going to have her day in court. Well, I can't think of any good reason why she shouldn't, can you? Well, now, supposing she shows up the city attorney now, how's that going to look? Well, it's going to look like the city attorney is a jackass, which he is. It's going to be a great blow for ladies' freedom. And it's going to be a great testimonial to Esther Helpenstall's ability as an attorney. You don't know what you're saying, Heck. Now, this whole affair is going to open up a Pandora box. Now, you mark my words. You know, sometimes I wish that widow had asked for my job. I'd surely give it to her. I want you to turn Anna Carmody down. No, I can't. Mm. Hold on, hold on. I'll grant the autopsy. You gotta drop charges against the widow. Yeah, I let the widow out of jail ten minutes ago. But don't you count on it the next time? More or less you, Marlene, in her direction. Hm. You see, this town is not like most towns you'll find in the old west, because mainly it ain't old. No, everything you see around here started in one bunch 13 years ago when they opened up the Cherokee Strip. Well, everybody sure looks busy making money. What are you going to do with that? Soften your whiskers. Ah! Uh, uh, I, I just want them shaved off, not melted off. Little heat shouldn't bother a bronco like you. Better than having me scrape patches off your face. <sighs> After the first shot, makes you feel restful, don't it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, like you say, everybody here being so modern-like, they, they probably keep all their money in the bank, huh? Mostly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know the bank used to be the worst place to keep your money, with wild gangs shooting them up like the James boys and the Youngers. That's history. We don't get that kind anymore. Why, you got some money you're worried about? Well, everybody's got some money. Not everybody I know. Anyway, you don't have to worry about our bank. Got the latest safe in from St. Louis? And we got a pretty good police department, too. Oh, yeah, I know. Heck, Ramsey's an old friend of mine. Is that a fact? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Well, that gives you even less to worry about. Oh, yeah, he's about the best lawman I ever got had the pleasure of meeting. Of course, uh, I don't imagine he's uh, quick as he used to be, huh? He's been quick enough to do the job here. Hmm. And that, uh, that young chief stamp, he's a pretty smart fellow. Willing to learn, that's as smart as anyone has to be. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I was thinking it. <sighs> Sorry. You want to keep talking, I won't be responsible for the shaving. Make me nick you too much, and I'll have to charge you for a medical consultation.
I could have done the job, couldn't I? Well, I mean, ain't that right? That's right, absolutely right. Why should I care if he don't care? Jim Riley, that's all he cares about. He don't care about me. I could have done the job, he'd just give me a chance. My friend, you have some real fine Kentucky bourbon. Yes, sir. You gonna write treat me like some kind of dog? Just because he's my dad, he can't treat me like some kind of mongrel dog, ain't that right? Hey, I'm talking to you. I said, ain't that right? Hey, what are you, stupid or something? You better answer me. Now, do you hear me? Now, look here, Sonny. Nobody calls me Sonny. Well, I might have known you was on the other end. You want to call me Sonny again? I, I, I. You can cause more damn trouble flat on your back than anybody I ever did see. You two, come in here. Now, lock these two up, and this time make sure that this walking calamity stays locked up. Now, just one minute, Hank. I had nothing to do with starting this here ruckus. I was standing right there, mine. <laughs> Tomorrow on the CBS Late Movie. Two tons of lead. It disappeared right in front of us. Somewhere, something is devouring victims inside out. This substance is composed of a strange combination of chemical elements and bone To calculate its power, Kolchak matches wits with an outer galactic horror as the Night Stalker. My preliminary is right, Heck. There are no wounds, no internal injuries, no signs of poison or any kind of violence. He died of natural causes? I'm afraid so. You mean that his heart just up and stopped? That's right. Well, what condition was his heart in? Oh, I'm no specialist, but the muscles look good, so did the arteries. What about the pressure and the circulation? Well, I can't be sure without any medical records on the man, but I'd say his circulation was probably good also. Well, Doc, don't that seem strange to you? Young man, nothing wrong with his heart. His pressure, his circulation, and he just up and drops dead a heart failure? Yes, it's strange. But it can happen, I suppose. Medical science has a long way to go before it can come up with all the answers. That's why I earn more of my living with the scissors than a scalpel. The only time I ever saw anything like this was up in mountain country in Wyoming. I examined a dead miner. Looked healthy as a horse, but his heart had stopped beating. What did that? Exposure. Well, that don't help us a damn bit. Tim Riley never even left New Prospect. Things are really gonna start getting mean for us now. I never did see much reason for that autopsy in the first place. Oliver, don't second guess me. Well, Mrs. Carmody and her petitioners are going to be around here as soon as the word gets out, screaming for our jobs. Let them scream. Your father will get here as soon as he hears you're in trouble again. What is it, Neil? The trouble you had about Tim Riley? Now, you hold on. What goes on between my father and I? Well, that's none of your business. It's my business when you start busting stuff up. When you start bad-mouthing a man who died under strange circumstances. 
What are you talking about? He died natural. I seen him with my own eyes. Why, there wasn't a mark on him. Did you see him earlier, when he got sick? Nope. Well, when was the last time you saw him? The night before. I got in late the morning he died. Pa had already sent him home because he's sick. Now, I don't know what you're getting at, but don't you try to hang this on me. You ever have a fight with Tim Riley? No. Well, that's peculiar. One time or another, you've picked a fight with almost everybody in this town, but not with the one man you hated the most. Well, nothing would have pleased me more. But Pa would have kicked me right out of the house. He always favored Tim. Gave him the job of form without giving me half a chance. The way he carried on about him, you'd have thought it was his own son. Well, with Tim Riley out of the way, your problems are solved. Well, that's what I thought. And I'll tell you something, Ramsey. When I heard he was dead, well, I was glad. But I didn't kill him, and that's a fact. Now, you know something? That looks like blood. Here, let me see that. You're still barking up the wrong tree, Ramsey. That blood's from a steer I butchered two days ago. Oh, I thought you didn't butcher out at your father's place. We don't. But Pa asked me to butcher one up special for him. He's running some kind of test. Yeah, two days ago. That would be the day before Tim Riley's death, hmm? That's right. So I could have had nothing to do with Riley's death. Yeah. Well, it's the same kind of blood that was on Tim Riley's shoes. It's cow's blood. Hmm? And according to Neil, he slaughtered that steer the day before Tim was killed. But the blood on Tim's boot was still fresh. Oliver! Ramsey. I hear you're holding my son. Yes, sir. What are the charges? Creating a public nuisance, drunk and disorderly, destruction of private property. I'll pay the fines and damages. They haven't been figured yet. I'll post a bond then. That should be easy enough, matter, Ramsey, unless there are more serious charges. Bond won't be necessary, Mr. Munson. I'll release him in your custody. Thank you. Now, Neil claims he slaughtered some beef for you. Yes. Two days ago, I bought some cattle from a rancher I'd never done business with before. I wanted to test it for quality, disease. What'd you do with the meat? I gave it away. Some poor Indians. It's good beef. I suppose they'll verify that. Well, if you can find them. Yeah. Well, how long ago was that? Tim was the one who doled it out. Uh, day after it was butchered. What is this, Ramsey? Are you still trying to make a murder case out of Tim Riley's death? Well, sir, uh, I'm not trying to make anything. I just uh, keep looking for the truth. Well, the truth is plain. Tim died of heart failure. I didn't object to your questions in the beginning, or even your insinuations about Neil. I supported you in that autopsy. That's over, Ramsey. I'm warning you to let up. You're not being paid to hurt innocent people. Well, I haven't had too many complaints lately from innocent people. Carmody's out to get you fired. Well, Anna Carmody will have to stand in line. But there's something that bothers me. Uh, you didn't sign that petition. Not to any place. I happen to have been in jail at the time, as you might remember. But you needn't worry about me and this autopsy business. I think the petition is sanctimonious. I believe Anna Carmody got it going out of her own feelings of personal frustration. 
Now, would you mind going over that again? Because sometimes you get a little deep for me. Mrs. Carmody had a terrible crush on Tim Riley. At church socials, it was all she could do to keep herself from embracing him. My guess is, if she couldn't know his flesh, she didn't want anybody else to know it either. You know something, Hester? You are really something special. And thank you. for your sin, Mr. Ramsey. Tim Riley was an innocent young boy, and you gave the order to put a knife in his flesh. Yeah. Well, somebody decided to kill him before I did anything. I'm going to try and find out who that was, with or without your blessing. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against the powers against the rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Corinthians, chapter 6. Yeah. Well, what do you want? Uh, well, I uh, want some flour. What for? What would anybody want flour for? Not uh, 10 pounds? No, I, uh, no, I better let me have 25 pounds, I believe. I might have known you wouldn't be gentlemanly enough to help me. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I uh, got confused uh, from whether I wanted 10 pounds or 25 pounds. And, uh, now I think I better have the ten pounds. No, I'll do that. Will that be all? All uh, right. Yes, ma'am. Except uh, I'd like to ask you some uh, personal questions about Tim Riley. What do you mean? Well, uh, Miss Carmody. Uh, See, there's a rumor flying around town that you were kind of sweet on Tim Riley. And I don't hold much with rumors, and I thought maybe you'd want to clear the air before that kind of talk got too far. You all right? Oh, yes. Of course. Why shouldn't I be? Mm. Well, um... Did you love Tim Riley? That is outrageous. I am a married woman. How dare you, you are suggest... a God-fearing woman. Now you tell me the truth. Yes, yes, I was fond of him. Is that a sin? No, it's not an answer to the question. Now, did you love Tim Riley? Come on! Yes, I loved him! <laughs> I still love him. Easy now. All right. Uh, uh, uh. Come here. Now, did you have a relationship with him? Yes. Yes, I did. Your husband know about it? We argued something terrible one night. And I told him everything. And what did he do? He beat me. With his hands. And then he took me down to Doc Coogan's. To see if I was with child. All right, come on. Come on. Come here.
it's easy to pay for your mistakes. Old Dad's gonna be right there. Look, nobody asked you to come get me. Well, what am I supposed to do? Just sit there in jail? Is that how you expect to become foreman around here? I thought you already decided I wasn't gonna you be. You make me decide what I decide. That's not the way a man does, Neil. Why don't you get a hold around here with your own two hands? Prove to me that you're the man for the job. Well, maybe I ain't. Well, there you are. See what I mean? No, that ain't what you mean at all. You want me to show you that I'm just like you. Well, I'm not. I'm not gonna be either. Well, what's that supposed to it mean? It means I'm quitting, Pa. Quit? What are you talking about? This is our place. No, it's not. It's yours. Founded by you, built by you. Why, everything on this place runs to suit you or don't run at all. Pa, that don't leave nothing for me. I gotta find my own place. What, are you still drunk? Look out that window. All that land, equipment, animals, everything you see out there is yours. No, that's one thing you taught me, Pa. Nothing is yours if it's just given to you. Well, then whose is it? Your mother. God rest her, gave me one son. If I built anything, it was for you. That's not so. Well, if that's not so, then nothing is. You think I need this place? And the money to give parties? Chase after saloon girls at my age? It's all for you, Neil. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. It's beginning to make sense for me, Pa. Look, I know you're going to be shorthanded with Tim gone. But as soon as you can hire somebody on, I'm leaving. Neil? I'm asking you not to do this to me. Pa. I know it ain't easy for you to ask anything of anybody. I I'm doing it for me. And if you think that's going against you, well, I just can't help that. Medical records on Tim Riley? Well, yeah, you know, the, the papers they give you uh, when you're discharged. With him, that was about a year ago. Oh, yes. Uh, we talked on several occasions about the time he spent in the Army. I believe he was a volunteer in the Spanish-American War. Yeah, the 2nd Volunteer Cavalry Brigade. I'm pretty sure we can get those records for you, but it may take a little time. I have to wire territorial headquarters. Well, I surely appreciate it. And not at all. Any way I can be of service. Ah, those are fine-looking boots. Ooh. My orderly keeps them well polished. Hmm. Army still uh, issue uh, two pairs of boots to a man? Well, the enlisted men. Officers are given a clothing allowance. We buy all our own uniforms and equipment, even the firearms. Hmm. Well... How many pairs of boots would it take a fellow like you to get by? I have three. One for dress, two for on duty, and I alternate them. Do you do much business with Frank Carmody? Oh, a few little things. Items we don't need enough of to order wholesale. Well, uh, did Tim Riley ever mention Frank or Anna Carmody? Now, don't tell me those folks are under suspicion, too. I don't know why it is on this case, but nobody will answer a direct question. Ramsey, as far as I know, Tim Riley was a loner and had no more to do with the comedies than with anybody else. Anyway, aren't you asking the wrong person? Now, Corporal, I want you to send a wire to territorial Tim Riley was not an acquaintance of mine. Well, maybe you and I'd better step away for a minute. What is it, Ramsey? I know about Tim Riley and your wife. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Carmody, Riley was murdered. 
The wages of sin is death. I don't want to hear any more of that Bible quote, and I had enough of that from your wife. I want to hear some straight Oklahoma American. Did you go after Tim Riley the way you did your wife? I wanted to. But I'm not fool enough to think that I was a match for any young man. But I wanted to. You know, for a young fellow who wasn't supposed to have any enemies... Heck! Ah, there's trouble in the saloon. Well, take care of it. I think you better take care of this one. Why, Barney Tolliver's still in jail, isn't he? It's the widow. Well, what is the widow doing in a saloon? I'm sorry, ma'am, you can't have that. Why not? I told you a dozen times women can't be served whiskey when they men, buy themselves. Men can. Well, men's different. Not according to the Constitution. Well, the hell with the Constitution. This is a free world. <laughs> if I don't want to serve no women alone, they ain't gonna be served. All you've proven is that you're stronger than I am. But so is an ape. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's my bottle, Mel. If women can't drink here alone, then neither can men. Oh, you no. little Manx, I've had my fill of you. All right. What are you doing, Ramsey? Now, that is no common swill, Billy. That is a lady. She's been drinking that I don't give a damn what she was doing. You got no right to be manhandling her. What about her? She broke the law. That is my business. Well, it sure ought to be. That little troublemaker's been busting the laws from here to Monday, and she's always getting away with it. That's correct, Mr. Ramsey. What do you intend to do about it? Turn her loose. Arrest. Turn her loose. Go what? on, arrest her, Ramsey. I think you ought to, Heck. Yeah, I suppose I ought to. Esther, put your hands out. Arnie. Well, you've never seen fit to use these before. Well, times are changing. Yes, they are, and for the better, I may add. Willful destruction of property, creating a public nuisance, drinking alone in a saloon. My cup runneth over. This time you're going to get your day in court, Mrs. Helpenstall. Hmm, I've heard those words before. You can count on it. And you know something else? He finds you guilty and give you a long sentence. And please, Lord, somebody else in jail. Still sucking on that sore tooth. I told Doc I'd come by first chance I got. Anything new on the Riley case? Just two new suspects. Who are they? Anna and Frank Carmody. Anna was having an affair with Tim Riley. Oh, what? Yeah, I know, but uh, Anna admitted it, and Frank knows about it, and that's motivation enough for murder. Somehow I can't picture Tim Riley slipping off with Anna Carmody. Well, Anna could. Guess she did a lot of thinking about it, probably more than Tim Riley was willing to put up with. I can see that. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Anna Carmody could be a very strong suspect. Yeah, except she didn't do it. What makes you so sure? Well, Anna Carmody can hardly lift a 25-pound sack of flour. Whoever killed Tim Riley carried his body a long way. That means almost any man in town could have done it. Well, since there's probably only three or four that have motivation. Frank Carmody and Neil Munson are the only ones I can think of. No, there are others. People who work with, for. Oh, I don't think there's a person in town who cared more about Tim Riley than Harry Munson. Yeah, but you just told me that Anna Carmody was a strong suspect. Now, damn it all, we have at least three suspects in this case, maybe more. We still don't have any proof Tim Riley was even killed. Yeah. Well, if it's any satisfaction to you, I have never seen a murder case like this. There's no wound, no weapon, no apparent means of death. Maybe no murder. On that, I'm sure. You better be, for my sake as well as yours. On that point, I agree, because I'm going to ask you to subpoena the books of the Munson Cattle Company, and Mr. Munson is not going to take kindly to that. 
What do you want his books for? Damn it, Oliver. The Munson Meat Company does over a million dollars worth of business a year. That's big business. Now let's take a look at the books. I never thought we'd be so anxious to prove a natural death was murder. <laughs> Mr. Barney, you uh, letting the widow know what to expect in the territorial prison? Oh, Lord forbid. I never knew what fire and brimstone was till I did a stretch in Newman. Although it wasn't too bad once I got the hang of it. Yeah, you told me that six years ago. Heck, Ramsey, you do have an uncanny memory. Hey, you know, you and I hardly got to talk to each other since I arrived in this town. Barney, our relationship has been a long galloping series of locking and unlocking jail cells. What are you doing? Well, Harry Munson agreed to pay the damages, so you are loose one more time. Yeah? All the charges dropped? Well, you want me to find something else? Oh, no. No, no. No, I was just getting comfortable. Well, all the charges dropped, eh? That means I can still afford to buy you a drink. If you on the outside again, uh, I could use one. Well, so long, Esther. Maybe next time we run into one another, you'll have changed your mind. I really like that widow lady. I really do. Yeah, I noticed you weren't too anxious to leave. I never met anybody like her before. She can almost make a man want to think about marriage. You mean you're planning on staying out of jail for a while? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna get a job. What kind of job? Well, I don't know. What kind of job do you think I'm suited for, Heck? You're a pretty good judge of character. Well, Barney, I think you ought to get into something along the salesman line. You got a good line of talk and nice personality. Well, thank you very much. About how much does that kind of a job pay? Well, seventy-five hundred dollars a month. A month? Oh, heck. I couldn't live on that. I like fine linens, good bourbon. Barney, I know what you're thinking, and don't think it. Well, let me tell you something I've been thinking for a long time. What? Heck, would you go into business with me? You and me? Hmm? Barney, I wouldn't go in business with you if you were honest. Now, wait a minute. It's not so crazy when you start to think about it. I mean, well, there's really not that much difference between you and me now. Somehow, I thought there was. How so? I mean, we both like excitement. Both know how to use a gun. Except you wear a badge and I don't. Well, I wondered if you thought that made any difference. And what's it got you? Well, it has kept me out of jail. What kind of money you making this job, Hank? Hundred dollars a month and a little bit of expense money. Hundred dollars a month. You're worth ten times that to this town, and they know it even if you don't. Depend on any of the people in this town who think I'm overpaid now. No, I'm being serious. After all, there ain't that many good years left for either of us. If we don't start thinking of the future now, we may never get another chance. Chance for what? How much money you got in the bank, heck? Not worth counting. Make any difference. I guess I respect you more than any man on earth. But the truth is, plainly, you're a fool. Oh, well, thank you. Well, isn't it so? I mean, every day you go out there in the street and lay your life on the line for less than it's going to cost to bury you one of these days. All right, Barney. What's on your mind? Well, about this job we're talking about. I was thinking. Why couldn't you help me get a job at the bank? Now, I'm going to tell you that I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you see, if you and... And you better forget what you're talking about. And if I have to say it again, you're going to end up right back in that jail cell. Heck, don't you know when I'm having fun with you? Yeah, you're a regular riot. 
Got work to do, Barney. You stand. Down. Yeah, guess I'm just going to have to look around town. Try to find me. Officer has everything under control. <laughs> you know, sometimes I wish you weren't so damn likable. What are you gonna do now? Look for some honest work, I guess. Well, there's always some around. Thanks, Hack. You're a man of wisdom. You truly are. like it in the manual heck well it could have come from one of those uh new uh, spring fields that the uh, army's experimenting with hey, that reminds me major holiday sent over them medical records you wanted on tim riley huh? say he's in perfect shape i saw i got the subpoena to examine harry munson's books but let's try not to ruffle them any more than we have to we're already walking on eggshells in this case hmm. What's that? That is the bullet with which somebody tried to kill me. Well, in a, in a sense, it's encouraging. What? I mean, I mean, somebody wants this investigation stopped. There must be a killer. Barney. Keep an eye on Barney Tolliver. If you lose sight of him, Keep your eye on the bank. Uh, I, I really didn't mean it that way. Now, what are your intentions about Barney Tolliver? You sound like the father of the blushing bride. Stop that. If you have any feeling for that man, this could be important. Well, whatever he is, he's nice. He did open my eyes to something very important to me. Like what? He made me see a part of my life that I... All I've just been ignoring since my husband died. I, I don't know, heck, I'm just so wound up in all this women's rights business. I, I guess I don't care about anything else anymore. Well, I take it to mean that you have no special feeling about Barney. I don't think I can care about any man ever again. Hmm. Well, wait a minute. Is he, is he in trouble? Well, you could say that he's flirting with it. What can I do? Well, you know that he's partial to you. If you have the same feeling toward him, there's a chance you could talk him out of doing something stupid. Well, do I have to love him to do that? Esther, if there's no real feeling between you two, then you can't help him. I don't need you, and I'll do it myself. Look out. How 
much is her bail? Five dollars. You get her out of here, and I mean you don't take no for an answer. Hmm? You, sir? Yes, sir. I'm uh, thinking of doing some business here in New Prospect, and uh, I may want to open an account in your bank. Also, uh, I think I'll be needing a safe deposit box, so I wonder if I might uh, examine your safe. Huh? Why, certainly, of course. Mm -hmm. Heck, books are one thing I know more about than you, and these seem to be in pretty good order. Yeah, they do. Mr. Winkler, you do nice work. Thank you. But I don't deserve all the credit. Uh, Mr. Munson keeps the books on the U.S. Army account. Oh? How come? It's my largest account. I choose to handle that personally. Uh, if you want to take them back with you and memorize them, that's all right with me. That won't be necessary, Mr. Munson. Thank you. I told Ramsey to get off this case after that senseless autopsy, but he wouldn't do it. He's only doing what the town hired him to do. Well, he's going up beyond that stamp. He's badgering innocent people, smearing reputations with all of his dirt digging. Call him off. I don't know if I can do that. Ramsey's a very stubborn man. Who's the chief? You or him? I am. But he's the best police officer in the territory, and you know that. If he believes in something as strongly as he believes that Tim Riley was murdered, I'm willing to go along with him. Stamp, aren't you forgetting who your friends really are? You wouldn't have made chief without my support. Maybe not. I appreciate what you did for me, you and all the other people on New Prospect. And I'm going to return that favor by doing the best job I possibly can. Meaning the Riley case is still open? It could be, sir, yes. Stamp, if I have my way at the next city council meeting, I'm going to ask for a review of your handling of Tim's death, and also of your job. Ammonia. Hey! Munson! Do you use ammonia for anything around here? Uh, what you smell is fertilizer. We uh, store it and sell it to the dirt farmers in the area. Animal waste turns into ammonia. Remember that from teaching chemistry. Yeah. Hey! How long are you going to live with that tooth? I know, I know. I'm going to see Doc Coogan about it later. Yeah. Then an audit, both of the same results. Well, that's probably the best feeling you had on this whole case. What about you? Where are you going? You dropping the case? Not unless you fire me. And I think it's too late for that.
Corporal, uh, Major in? No, sir. His Highness is at a social luncheon with some rancher from Colorado. Oh. Well, what's that all about? Well, Major's fixing to retire next year. He wants to get himself a little spread out there. Well, wouldn't we all? Not me. I'm going to die in the Army. Once the Major's gone, I can stand easy for the next 20 years. That Major must be some kind of hard man. Sir, that man could get sweat out of stone. Here, see these boots? He has me spit polish until I can see my eyes in. Hmm. Now, these his work boots? Yes, sir, both pair. He's got his dress boots on now. Do you mind if I have a look? Don't expect any mirror image, because I haven't shined them yet. Yeah. any way to get blood off leather? No, sir. Once you get blood on leather, it's on there for good. Yeah. Sergeant, you handle the books for the depot? Uh, just the local requisitions. The Major handles all the purchasing ledgers. Well, I wonder if I could have a look at the Munson Cattle Company account. Sure you can. All you have to do is blast open the bank. We keep all our purchasing funds and records in the safe. <laughs> well, isn't that unusual? No, sir. There's a lot of money involved. We don't have the men or facilities to protect it, so the Army uses the bank. Oh, yeah. Well, look here. Now, these conventional weapons. Yes, sir. You got any of those new model 30 caliber? The well, Major did order a couple of those new experimental Springfields. Mm. What happened to them? We gave them away as gifts. They make fine hunting rifles. Yeah, I heard that. Well, who were the lucky friends? Uh, Harry Munson and Frank Carmody. They've done an awful lot of good work for the Major. Mm. Excuse me, I've got to get this shipment ready. Nope. Well, I could tell in about two seconds whether this gun fired those shots at me. Don't arrest him, Mr. Ramsey. Hmm? It was all my fault. What you talking about, woman? Frank, I didn't have an affair with Tim Riley. Oh, don't you lie to me, woman. You've already damned your soul with sin. But it's not the truth. I made it all up. Frank, look at me. I'm so, so... Why would he look at me? Why would anybody look at me? You know something? This rifle never been fired. <laughs> you tell me all those lies? Because I... I wanted you to care. Here you are, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Do you like it, Frank? Hmm. <laughs> well, would you like helping? What's the damnest thing I ever saw? Nice cream. Ice in the middle of summer. How's this thing work? Oh, I don't know. Well, it's got to be cool with some kind of gas. Yeah, that's it. Mr. Carmody said it had something to do with ammonia. Yeah. What does ice cream have to do with Harry Munson? Well, it's not the ice cream, it's ammonia. Now, you remember that ammonia we smelled coming out of that shed at Harry Munson's? 
He said that was fertilizer. What are you going to do with that? The tooth has to come out. Who says so? You do. You told me yourself. You can't eat or sleep for the pain. Now swill some more of that whiskey over it and let's get it done. Oliver, I hate to bother you at a time like this, but I'm going to need two search warrants. Warrants two? Yes, sir. I'm going to need uh, one for Munson's shed, and I'm going to need one for those files that the Army has in the bank. The Army? You want me to authorize a search warrant for the United States Army? Well, I think we ought to if we're going to compare their books against Harry Munson's. Take some more whiskey. Huh. How's whiskey going to help my tooth? Did you ever have a tooth pulled? No. Take the whiskey. <laughs> station gets more police officers tell them to surround the bank. Ossifers, right. Hello, Barney. How'd you get here so fast? I had a man watching you. Stay where you are. Barney, even if by some miracle you get past me, you're not going to make it. I don't want to shoot you either, heck. But, but I got the whole jackpot right here in this bag. Now get out of the way. I suppose you got men outside. Front and back. Of course. That figures. Oh, damn it, heck, you never caught me this easy before. I handle this whole job like some clumsy beginner. Well, Barney, maybe your heart wasn't in it. All right. Go on home now. It's all over. It looks like I won't have to subpoena those army accounts. Uh, those books are confidential, Chief. I'm afraid you... This is evidence in a rank robbery. Well, bank robbery. The numbers in the Munson account don't seem to jibe with the ones Munson had. Look at the money in this box. Brand new government issue, never been touched. Whose is it? Well, I'd have to check the number. Oliver, stay with us. I'm going to pick up those search warrants. Father here? I'd sure you like to see him. Yeah, he's in the house. Why, what do you want? This place might be empty, isn't it? Yeah. Got an emergency call for more beef from the Army. We had to use everybody to round him up. Well, Paul's in the house. Property. Yes, sir, Mr. Munson, you did, and that's why I brought a search warrant. I'd like to see what's in that shed, where the ammonia is. I told you that's decomposed fertilizer. Yeah, well... It's no use, Harry. Let's show Ramsey what's in that shed. Ramsey. 
Let's get rid of those weapons you've got hidden under your coat. Harry? Stop. Yeah, we were expecting you. All right, Harry, open it up. Holiday, I don't know if we... Uh... Open it. Naked hell is that? It's a freezing room. Called refrigeration. Uh, keeps things fresh by keeping them cold. We were just experimenting there. That's what you did to Tim Riley. No, I didn't. He did. By the time I found out, it was too late. Yes, it is too late. Harry, you get in there, too. Inside, both of you. The only choice you're giving me is to use this rifle right now. Major. I thought you were out getting that beef I ordered. No. Didn't like the idea of Ramsey coming around here. What'd he want? I don't know. Well, no matter. Look, Paul ain't at the house. You seen him? Hey, what's that noise in there? <laughs> for new blood. And the next drink is on me. A uh, toast to all my good friends and neighbors in New Prospect. <laughs>
Now, you like to try something? business to keep it I had to kick back money to the major he did the buying Tim Riley found out about that I tried to make him understand the position I was in major tried to buy him off but he refused so he put him in the freezing room and carried him back to his own bed hmm. Get that written up. Let him read it before he signs it. How's my son? Arnie, how is he? He's unconscious, but he's holding up. When can I see him? Whenever he can see you. Is the Army going to court martial a major or turn him over to us? No, he's ours. That's what he used to take that shot at me, tag it for evidence. You are a lying, no good excuse for a man. Good morning, Esther. I agreed to go free on bail, but I am guilty and I want a trial. Saloon refused to press charges. Why? Because you're too popular and they don't want to lose the business. Oh, that's no excuse. I agree with you, but there's nothing I can do. Well, you promised me my day in court. Well, now, Esther, I don't know about your day in court, but there is a job in court if you want it. What are you talking about? Barney Tolliver's being charged with attempted bank robbery. He wants you to be his lawyer. He does? Hmm? Well, I demand to see my client. Well, you don't have to demand. You know where he is. I know he's wild and irresponsible, but there's a streak in him that I like. Damn if I don't, too. Chief's still over at Doc Sogans? Yeah, that too's still giving him the miseries, hey? Wear yourself out, Mr. Tolliver. Yes, sir. My golly, I thought you'd never get here. Mr. Ramsey tells me that you're interested in retaining me as your lawyer. You bet your sweet life I am. Well, Barney, you're in enough trouble as it is. Are you sure you want to take on a woman lawyer, too? Esther, if you're half as much lawyer as you are a woman, you'll be making some trouble for yourself. Oh? How's that? Don't you see? You get me off, and you're going to have a rough time getting rid of me. Really? Yeah. I finally found something in my life I love more than robbing banks. seems to be enjoying the anesthetic. Oh, early in the morning. 
Neil Munson, he gonna make it? Not by much, but I think so. He's young and strong. Don't look like the pulling hurt him a bit. No, but when he wakes up, I don't know if he'll be glad to trade that toothache for the hangover he's gonna have. Amen. Amen. Chị, chị, chị hỏi theo cái kiểu là ô thế sao hôm nay mẹ mẹ thấy uh, minh nó gọi điện cho mẹ bảo là thế con không nấu cơ mà thế sao nó bảo là uh, thì hôm nay con về con mệt lắm thì con không nấu cơ con bảo là ăn cơm ngoài đi thế sao thế sao không thấy nói gì bảo là ừ thôi thì uh, đi làm về kiểu nó cũng mệt đấy thì thôi hai đứa nấu cơm ăn cơm ấy kiểu thế ăn cơm ngoài tự nhiên sao thì... ăn cơm ngoài thì... thằng kia nó cứ muốn là con em chị phải nấu cơm hiểu không thế ăn cơm ngoài thì nó lại mệt mệt thả ra nó không muốn nó không thích đi ăn ngoài kiểu như là ăn ăn cơm vợ nấu thì mới khó mới mới đỡ mệt vậy ừ tôi không biết nói chung tóm lại là con em tôi nó bảo chứ à, em không nấu cơm cho nó gọi điện về nó nó bách mẹ nó kể <cười> chuyện về kể chuyện buồn vãi như trẻ con chuyện đéo gì đâu không phải chuyện mẹ nó thế mà bao giờ nói chuyện với con thì bình thường ví dụ như chẳng hạn như gọi điện về các thứ ấy, thì cũng sẽ chêm vào chêm mặt vào đây ừ. thì vẫn là phải vẫn phải có mặt chứ phải nói chuyện với nó nhớ chứ không nói bố mẹ nói nhớ thì chẳng gọi điện về để nói chuyện với nó nhưng mà kiểu bây giờ bảo đón vào trong đây thì lại kiểu như mà bảo là ừ. Ừ.
người đàn ông nghe lời mẹ ê nhưng mà nhá tôi nói bà nhá tôi thà không nghe lời còn hơn nữa bà phương ạ mà nghe lời tôi thấy kinh lắm bà phương ạ thật nói như ông bạn là ông huy không hợp với lại bố mẹ ăn nuôi nhưng mà tôi thấy người mà nghe lời mẹ thì tôi thấy sợ lắm anh Dương cũng thuộc bạn lão rồi, nó nháo trên cành cáo rồi <cười> Không ngày nhỏ thì cũng ngoan, cũng nghe lời mẹ lắm đấy Nhưng mà sau càng lớn càng không nói chuyện được kênh của mình để mình ra thêm nhiều video tô tranh hơn nữa à, cảm ơn cả nhà đã theo dõi hết video xin chào